Remember, I've got the fourth chapter of, uh, and possibly the fifth chapter of Romans this morning. Um, first verse of the fourth chapter, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he hath worked to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the godly, ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh the blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? <clears throat> for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Now, was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for were no law, is there is no transgressions. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As written, I have made the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Yet therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for also us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have, also, we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patient experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet for adventure. For a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all that, that all have sinned. 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But now as the fence is, so also is the free gift. For it, through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> hath abounded unto many. And now as it was by the one that sinned, so as the gift of the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of the many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man sins disobedience, well, for by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law <clears throat> entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, this is <clears throat> a very good treatise about God's gift of grace to his people. That's what it's all about. God's gift of grace to his people. Paul starts with Abraham, and he calls Abraham our father. And he says that Abraham, if Abraham were justified by works, uh, he hath were of the glory, but not before God. And he says, but what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, my question is, where did Abraham's faith come from? Did he just decide one day, I think I'm going to believe in God. I think I'm going to believe in uh, um, Jesus Christ. I think I'm going to believe in in uh, the uh, sacrificial atonement of Jesus Christ. No, this uh, faith and this belief that was credited to him for righteousness was um, grace. It's grace, the grace of God that was imparted to him, that was given to him. You can't separate faith and belief and grace. They're all a package deal. And he said... Uh, in the sixth verse, even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Who does the imputation? By the way, imputing means that uh, to uh, credit, to credit, to give a credit to. If you're going to impute sin to somebody, you're going to give him the credit for, for committing this sin. If you're going to give someone righteousness, you're going to give them the credit for the righteousness. And that's what David's saying here, that God imputeth or gives us credit for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed are they. Blessed are they. In other words, they're a very special people that God has shown grace to and mercy to and has covered their sins. And he says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He will not impute their sin. All men have sinned. We're all born and conceived in sin. We see that in the fifth chapter. All men are born and conceived in sin. But there's a certain group of people David says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. In other words, he will not credit the sins to their account. Um, he has laid the sins upon Jesus Christ. 